Hey, what's up there, bootstrappers? This is Ryan Nickel with another day in the life of a real estate bootstrap investor. All right, episode number 126. Coming at you with a little bit of Wilson in the background. Went and uh, deposited some checks, checked the mail, did some other errands with my little boy in the back there. So Woody Allen says that the uh, that 90% of, sh of success is showing up. And uh, I think I just whistled like hella loud with that showing up. So yeah, 90% of success is showing up. Um, I want to say, Ryan Nickel goes on record saying that 90% of your success as a real estate investor is following up. If you're not following up, you're, you're leaving money on the table. There's money that is just being left there. Um, perfect example is just last week, I followed up with a dude that I've been going on for years with him. And I've ignored the, the promptings, the, the into my gut saying, hey, go talk to this guy. So I finally came to a head and went and talked to the guy and check it out, we're, in, we're, we're moving forward on a deal. Um, I got guys that I follow up with almost every two, possibly three weeks, either via text or some other kind of form of communication because that's that was how our communication's always just gone back and forth. It's super easy to do. And um, so it gets tedious though. Here's the thing, like this is why it's an art, you know, and not a science. Because if it was a science, it would be, it just would get done regardless. But because it takes the personal effort and some energy on my part to do it, instead of doing a canned response of like, is your house sold yet? Are you interested in selling? Which I've done that, and I finally get you know, f you, man, I'm not selling you my house. All kinds of crap, you know, because it just it's annoying. It's not personal. It's it's just it's a robot. No one likes to be spammed, and that's basically what it becomes. So anyway, um, here's where the where it becomes tough. It's like you know, you get these dudes that like they tell you like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I get this one guy. He's like, oh yeah, I'm coming to town. I promise, man. I'll be there this weekend, and we can go ahead and get everything written up. It doesn't happen, so I call him back. Or I text him, hey, what happened? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're all doing it this weekend, I promise, man. It's like, eventually you just get sick and tired of the people lying to you. You just want to tell a guy just to, you know, go fly a kite or something like that. Just get lost. And, uh, you know, and I've done that. <laughs> I've done that. It's an old technique that you learned from Jim Camp in his uh, book, Start With No. It's called strip lining. Is you go out there and you just like, you, you, you set the bait, you hook, set the hook, and you give it all this line. You give it all this line, and then you start to pull it back in. And when you start to pull it back in, that's when the fishes start to come. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's where it, it, it backfires. And so I'll be like, hey man, you know what? We're, uh, we're limited on funds. We're gonna go buy another house instead of yours. We thought we were gonna move faster than we were on yours. And so therefore I'm just gonna go ahead and cross your name off my list and go on to the next one. Sometimes that works and other times it just, it's dead silence. You don't hear anything from them. And so I'll wait two or three weeks and uh, and I'll come back, like maybe, you know, I'll be like, hey, you know what? We, uh, we came into some more money. We're looking at buying another house because you're still available. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. So it's just, you know, I never want to like permanently cross somebody off my list and this, unless they say, hey, the house is sold or I will never sell to you. So, I mean, that's where it comes down to is this is why it's an art. You got to figure out ways to get people re-engaged with you in the conversation because eventually, as my friend just told me today, I become persona naglahama. I don't even know what he said, man. It was some crazy like Latin thing, but it's like... Not a not a gratis or something like that. Not a gratty. I don't even know what it was. But basically, is you become an invisible person to the person, and it's like, okay, how do you become from you know becoming this this pest to this welcome guest, and um, you know that sounds kind of cool, but it's not mine. It comes from a great marketer named Dan Kennedy. Is you know I don't want to be this pest that's constantly hitting on them and um, or hitting them up to sell their house, but definitely not hitting on them. That's not what my style is. Um, but I want to get, you know, buy their house. It's like, how do I do this so that I don't become like this annoying person that's constantly contacting them? How do I get them back engaged in the conversation? Um, usually sometimes what happens is one, they get an offer and the offer is, uh, you know, lower than anticipated. It goes dead silent. Like I got a call today from a lady. She received my, I got your letter. Have you seen the property? I'm like, Whoa, why is it in bad shape? She's like, no, why do you ask? Well, usually when someone says, have you seen the property? It's like, Hey, have you, have you seen the property? Uh, it usually means that like it's in pretty, you know, a lot of disrepair is pretty bad. She's like, no, 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 no. I just want to know if you've seen it so you can make me a fair offer on it. I'm like, yeah, it sounds, you know, that's fair enough. So I'll go by the house, the, the property later today. It's commercial mixed use kind of thing. Um, and uh, I'll check it out and see what it is. But anyway, you got to find ways to be creative and getting them re-engaged in the conversation because if you can't get them re-engaged in the conversation, then what are you doing? You're just annoying the hell out of them. Eventually, they're just going to say, you know what? I sold it to somebody else because you just sucked. I hate talking to you kind of thing. And I never want that to happen. It has happened before. I've had people tell me just to go to hell kind of thing. And you got to have thick skin. But just follow up, follow up, follow up and find creative ways to bring the back into the conversation. Like I said, you know, when I work with my money partners, my money partners, this is a true statement. I'm not lying to the guy like, oh, we ran out of money. It's, hey, money was allocated to another project. You took your time. You know, we couldn't get to it. 
it. And you know, those are factual statements that I've been having with my money partners. And when they tell me that, that's when I go back to these guys, seeing if I can go ahead and create some kind of scarcity for them to come back to me. Um, sometimes scarcity works, sometimes it doesn't. It just what it is what it is, but just follow up. That's the key to the game. 90% of your success is for those that follow up. I'm gonna go ahead and create a meme for that. I coined it, that's right, Ryan Nickel, your bootstrap investor. All right, I'll chat with you all later. Just remember, you're just one deal away. And if it's a follow-up deal, who cares? You're just one deal away from changing your entire financial future. You get out there and get it. And he agrees with you, you hear that? Yeah, Wilson! Say bye, Wilson. Bye. <laughs>